Hey everybody, welcome to the Jesus Taxi. I'm so excited about this episode with a friend of mine in Nashville that I've been knowing since the early 90s and I can't wait. Uh, the trick is not to be in the car for three hours. <laughs> 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 but stick around for the next 30 minutes as we talk about life and parenting and music and the arts. Welcome to the Jesus Taxi. I'm Wayne Hanson, your host, and I'm in Nashville, Tennessee with an old friend I've been known since 1991, I think. Yeah. And uh, he runs a group called The Arts Place, does theater and music. Uh, we used to be at Christ Church together. And without any further ado, I'm going to introduce you to, to my friend and soon yours, Mr. Steven Tedeschi. There he is. Hey, everybody. The, Ita- the, it- <laughs> the Italian cappuccino man. I always yeah, do right, the big man. handshake. So we, we are going to. Uh, right around wow, yeah. uh, Antioch, I guess we're in Antioch. Antioch. Yeah, yeah, Antioch. They call it Cane Ridge now because you know. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we're south of Nashville in a great little spot that Kim and I used to live with the Tedeschi's, yeah, not crazy. far away. And uh, we're going to back in our twenties, right? That's craziness. It's totally crazy. <laughs> it's totally crazy. But we're st- here. We are still still good friends. Still I love that. friends. Still loving I love Jesus. That. Yep. Still doing ministry. Still doing it. Same wives we had. Yeah, same wives, <laughs> new kids. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. The yeah, more things was, change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, that was right? great. Yep. That was great times. We could not. There was nothing that we couldn't do together. Right. Man, we're, we, we did it. That's right. We were broke all the time, right, exactly. like every everyone else in Nashville. Sometimes <laughs> hey, but, still are. Know, we made some great things with ramen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Our wives were fabulous. Oh man, <laughs> it was great. So we. Um, we, wow, look at this. People are gardening here. It's, right. it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day, day in it's Mental, Tennessee. 90. Yeah, that's why we be careful with these batteries that they don't overheat. That's my big challenge. So I go right or left you here. Go, well, go left if you're going to Hickory oh, Hollow. Okay, like let's Bell Road. do it. Yeah, let's do it. We'll go by where, yeah, I, where, where I used, used to, to live. live. Yep, we used yeah, to live right? in the same apartment complex as Audio Adrenaline and the Newsboys. Right, they were all over the place. Everybody <laughs> was just like, you know, that's where Catherine DeCarly lived, and that's where Rick uh, Kua lived, and that's where Sonic Flood lived. And it's like, you never knew. Right? Yep. Things are always changing. So we'll we'll get to the main road, and we won't bounce around quite so much, but this is great. So uh, before we get into the conversation too much, I'm going to show you guys this um, video from the Arts Place. Uh, Stephen and Miriam, Kim and I used to do the kids musicals at Christ Church together. Steve was Salty was the crazy. Songbook, Salty the Singing Songbook. <laughs> wow, that was so long ago. <laughs> right? wow. and, uh, and then Kim was uh, Mary the Mother of Jesus at the Easter production. Oh, yeah. And I remember Steve being on a cable that. system as Jesus going up into the ceiling of Christ Church and the Judds were there and Dolly right, was there and they're right. crying they're telling Kim that she did a great job and like man we were just that was that oh, was yeah, that. 90s Nashville man it was amazing back when I had hair long, long hair. <laughs> right you you really did look like <laughs> Jesus long. yeah it was amazing <laughs> um, right here you yeah go straight oh straight okay yep. all right so I want to play this video from the arts place so you guys can see what Stephen and Miriam are up to these days and then I'll we'll talk on the other side. Shelly and I are touring musicians, and a couple years ago we were doing a Christmas tour that was taking us uh, all up and down the East Coast, playing Carnegie Hall and Kennedy Center and several different uh, venues like that. And the artist on the tour actually asked Trey to uh, to open the whole second half of the show with an acapella, just him standing out on the stage all by himself, no music, <laughs> nothing, and singing uh, Once in Royal David City. Which scared me to death to even think of. <laughs> and so um, we we agreed, and Trey came to me in rehearsals. He said, "Dad, I'm I'm really nervous about you know standing in front of all these people and singing." And I said, "Well, I, you know, I understand that." I said, "But use your arts place training." And he, it's like a, a light immediately <laughs> went on, and he 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 became a character. Mm-hmm. He embodied his character, and he went out every night 
not once did he ever stumble or falter so or <laughs> even miss pitch. It is. It absolutely is true. No, he did great. But I, I, I totally give credit to the Arch Place for mm -hmm. enabling yeah. him to do that work. The Arts Place is really good at making you have another family. It's wonderful to be around people who care about you and see your flaws and are okay with them. And then you get to perform and have this wonderful experience on stage together. It's helped me find a track to go on. Being a senior, I really didn't know where I wanted to go career-wise before joining the Arts Place. And doing this for a few years has made me realize that it's so much fun. I, uh, I've played drums in youth my whole life. And uh, now I lead worship, and I wouldn't have been able to lead worship if Stephen hadn't pulled me out of my comfort zone and you know, had me do things that I didn't want to do. <laughs> uh, the Artist Place gave me something that, you know, isn't just temporary, but something I can use my whole life, like boldness and confidence on stage, and even confidence just to meet somebody that may be, I don't know, intimidating. But uh, yes, I would recommend the Artist Place to anybody and everybody, because it, it, has done, it has done works in my life. It's done a lot in my life. I heard about the Arts Place through my friends Miriam and Stephen Tedeschi. I've known them about 25 years. I worked with them in the church for a while. And I heard about this program that would help my kids, my sons, come out of their fear of standing in front of people and just really bring their personality out. And I've been so excited with those results. I want to recommend the Arts Place to you no matter what age your kids are. It's a great social builder. It's a great confidence builder. Uh, Stephen has a way of helping these kids find confidence that they didn't have, they didn't realize they had. And I'm, I just recommend, I think every kid, you, you may say, well my kid's not artsy or doesn't want to be an actor. This is not just about that, it's about projection, it's about personality, it's about social building, it's about team building. And I'm just telling you, I've seen a radical change in my boys as a part of being a part of the arts place. So please let me recommend whatever your kids age, get them involved right now. It's great. The arts place is honored to teach stage presence and performance through theater in Nashville. Every semester is designed to enrich and reinforce creativity, to foster a renewal of hope and promote self-confidence in each one of the students. From productions and annual retreats, to showcases and classes. Kids get a unique experience unlike any other. I'm Lee Greenwood. We can't do this without you. We ask you to give. Well, the Arts Place in Nashville. Stephen, where, where is it located? Where Where is it currently, where are you guys currently doing the, the arts program? You know, we, we rehearse out of a church in Murfreesboro. It's Greater Grace and we were performing downtown at a place called Four Story Theater, and we don't really have a, a place of our own, so mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of our performances actually in our lobby at Grace Church, Nashville, nice. in Franklin, because there's a it's a big it's an old uh, movie theater, so the lobby is huge, and we just set up a stage, and it just kind of works. That's awesome. Works from there. So uh, tell me the business model. Is it like the parents pay a tuition on like certain days of the week, or like parents, the parents pay a tuition? It is. We meet every Thursday for the school year. It parents get their kids involved. How much does it cost? Like what day a week of the weeks and stuff <laughs> does it happen? That's funny. You know, I really don't know that we have a business model. <laughs> I should know how much it costs, but I don't. It's my wife that does all that. She's always been the admin. She still is. So I'm just like... So it's affordable. It's affordable. Yeah, you know, it is. We meet once a week through the school year. And it's not really we're trying to turn these kids into theater buffs, but we help them develop their character, their personality, help them find a good foundation in who they are through the means of theater exercises. And then we end with a production each semester. So we found that there were places in town that kids wanted to do a production and they would go and all they would do is read scripts and things and never do a production. So they had nothing to work towards. Right. So, you know, they came, they found us and then 
what we love to do is take these kids who are shy and put them up on stage and give them exercises to pull them out of their shell because that's the same thing that happened for me when I was in eighth grade my teacher made me do it pulled me out of my shell and I learned that that's what I like to do for kids because it gives them a good foundation helps them find their character in who they are and can maintain that so if they do go into theater or they go out into the world they don't have to compromise their faith or their gender or their morals or their beliefs or compromise anything right just be who you are and especially give them a good foundation in God so they can discover that and maintain that so that's kind of like our model yeah yeah <laughs> what we do every week and I'm, I imagine I, mean, I did a bunch of theater too uh, in addition to all the music with the rock bands and stuff growing up in high school and college I imagine you guys do a lot of improv exercises so they learn how to be comfortable in their own skin with all the different emotions of happy, sad, mad, glad, joyous, jumping up and down, anger, all that stuff. Absolutely. We do improv all the time because we tell them, you can use this in life. You never know it's going to happen. You know, it helps them be able to talk to people and give their testimony comfortably without being afraid on stage. So... Like I said, you never know what's going to happen, and you always you always need improv. Right. You know, you're, you've been in those conversations where you're like, hey, how are you? Right. People say fine, and they're done. Right, and I, and I use so many acting techniques uh, when I'm preaching because when you're, if you're going to, if you're going to tell a story like in the Bible, you have to be animated and be a good storyteller to make the Bible come alive because the, right. the Bible's not a boring book and you better not make it boring. Right, because it helps people listen. Hey, look where we are. There you go, Christchurch, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so flip, flip the forward camera there, we'll... We'll, uh, right, Where's bottom right corner there. Yep. Bottom right corner. Look, yeah, look at that. Are. Look at that. Christ it's Church. Christ Church. It's yeah. where it all started with us. Yep. Bottom right corner. Well, I'll, I'll roll around. in. We'll okay, do the, we we'll do the little, around. uh, we'll do the Easter drive through. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, those things. <laughs> we used to do the Easter drive through. Wow, you're going way Stations back, of the right? Cross, right? Stations of the Cross. <laughs> yeah. We just did, like he was saying, Salty, the singing songbook. <laughs> we were here forever building the set. Right. Because we did, you know, I had a professor in college that, and then Landy Gardner, who was our my boss here at Christchurch, was do excellence for God, and that's what we always did growing up. Right. Is just excellence. So that's what we did with Salty yeah, and flip that the front, drive through the forward tower there. You Look can at see. That. Oh, I Christ love Church. it. That yeah, is the, so the many tower. rich wow. memories at Christchurch, man. Oh, someone else coming in. Yeah, and if if. If you get a chance, go online and watch some of the old choir videos, you know, when they were playing and singing uh, yeah. at, the, at Opryland and, you know, just amazing. Church choir, yep. Amazing, God-appointed, God-anointed kind of moments at Christ Church, you know. Yeah. With, and uh, yeah, we, we, we what a... what a for years. Right? Yeah, and you went and videoed for us and just yep. a lot of different things. For sure. I th- in I, Children's ministry, youth ministry worship ministry like small groups remember we did the uh <laughs> we did the 2030 vision uh sunday school class up here for yeah, young adults well, that's, oh i think that building is still here you know just like everything progression everything changes so buildings are torn down but i th- think that building is still here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a lot different than it used to oh, be oh yeah and what um i i la- on my last trip i did a little songwriting arranging work with uh, Christopher Phillips. Oh wow! Who's, yeah, awesome. uh, man, he's a great keyboardist, great arranger, just a really dynamic musician. And uh, I was trying to explain to him what what it was like doing worship at Christ Church back in the day with youth, and you know when uh, Linda was still here and all that stuff. And you know, just some things you just you go, well, I guess I guess you just had to be there, <laughs> you know? right? Because you know what, anything anything went. Okay, I say went because it's not anything goes. We're not there anymore. Right. right. Anything went. Whatever would minister to the people, we did it. Whatever would get them closer to God, right? We did it. And there was never like, no, you can't do that. We're like, yeah, well, watch us, and we did it. <laughs> right. I think, and I, I remember uh, watching the uh, Pastor Hardwick's funeral, and thinking about um, what made him so unique as a pastor was he had the gift of yes, he had the gift of right. well. Will the Lord use it? Well, <laughs> exactly. let's let's give it a try. And See if, if it, you, who if, knows? Maybe the Lord will use it. If you could dream it, <laughs> and it was good for God, like you said, then yep, 
Go ahead, do it. That's right. Well, maybe it might work. Who knows? It just, <laughs> right. it just might work. You might try it. You might could try it this way. Right. You know. And everything just seemed to work. Then I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. That's right. Well, uh, I think an openness. A, a cult. You had a. We had a culture of openness. You know. Right. I've never gone out this way. Yeah, Bosa. this is the cemetery. Yeah, okay. Well, it's peaceful and it's Memorial smooth. Gardens, right? It's really good for the yeah. Jesus Taxi it Show, is, for right? sure. This is fantastic. You guys got to see this. I don't know if you've ever seen this little... Look at that. Isn't that the cutest little thing, the Jesus Taxi? I love this. That is so cute. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, you know, I know, it was, I know it was sort of made in mockery, but... I love it's having perfect. I love having a dashboard <laughs> Jesus, and I just talk to him all the time. I'm like, "Come on, Jesus, help me out." Hey, Jesus, what do you think of this? What? Look at this, Jesus. And then it's also a good reminder, like, "Hey, how are you driving there, Wayne?" Jesus, oh, yeah, Jesus, well, Jesus is watching. I have to put some blindfolds on him when I'm driving, <laughs> right? And then if I if I start getting a little too cussy in the car, I'll go, "Oh, I'm sorry, Oops. Jesus. I'm sorry. That's not that's yeah. not who I want to be." <laughs> A lot more dead people than I remember. Yeah, guess that happens. It does. That's part. Of, death is a part of life, I guess. Yeah, beautiful grounds here, and I think Absolutely. they've got they've they've had a lot of pastoral changes, gone through a lot of doctrinal and stylistic changes. Yeah, but they have in the last few years. A good friend of mine is actually the pastor now. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And he, uh, did you say he had a, a drama background or some kind of? He has. He's done a lot in theater. He actually did some stuff with us. And yeah, we he came and started. We did Royal Rangers. Wow. He kind of helped launch Royal Rangers here <laughs> because they didn't have a boys or girls program and right. growing up assemblies. I'm like, hey, we should do Royal Rangers and Missionette. So he helped launch that. That's awesome. And then he ended up um, being the children's pastor. Yep. For a little while, and then went to Trevecca for theology and just kind of so he was like us you just do whatever he needs done absolutely and then eventually they ask him he um i want to say auditioned he uh tried out yeah and they he's the pastor so that's awesome that's awesome great 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 man that's cool ben anderson look him up yeah yeah i've I've watched a few of his sermons during the pandemic i was watching i was like i wonder how christ church is doing this pandemic thing and i was noticed they were having church outside with the state we all do whatever we could right (laughs) right, exactly that was the craziest time in church history man we're just churches did not know what to do or where to go and then we want to obey the law but at the same time the law is telling us that we can't have church and like what what <laughs> yeah, tell us we can't have we'll figure out a way to have it <laughs> right if the early church was meeting underground right. in secret and and illegally then i i think we're obligated to meet whether the government says it's legal or not yeah you know? lindell did stuff from his house from his back porch you know he's like here we are in the back porch we're gonna have church you know and then his son would play you know or just whatever whatever it took we just right kept, we gotta keep it going yeah and and you know? What I learned during the pandemic in ministry is we, that we just can't live in fear. Right. Fear is fear is one of the devil's greatest tools, and if he can keep us in fear, then then he'll freeze us up from doing anything for God. So I want to take a quick ad break here. And what do you look for in a good church? A loving spiritual family, life-giving messages that help you draw closer to God, a place to raise your kids with moral values, a place to connect a place to protect, and a place to grow. You can find all this and more at Summit Church of Douglas County in Sedalia, Colorado. Summit Church isn't a perfect church, but it's a loving spiritual family nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains in Sedalia. Come join us for an in-person worship at 1030 a.m. Mountain Time at 4240 North Perry Park Road in Sedalia, Colorado, 80135. Or join us live on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Summit Church Sedalia. For more information about our ministry, visit mysummitchurch.com. Do you want to start a relationship with God? Visit 29minutes.org and learn more about how to have a friendship with Jesus Christ. All right, the local church, man. It's I, Obviously, I, I, I knew that would be a part of a conversation, but, you know, that's what you and I truly have in common is investing our lives into, into the local church. Yeah. And into people. You know, I was just telling a friend of mine yesterday that, and this kind of came out from watching The Chosen, and if you haven't watched it, you people need to watch it. It's 
probably one of the best Christian television things I've ever seen. You know, and we as Christians sometimes don't recommend things like that because we're embarrassed. But I think it's great. Anyway, I was telling someone about how they depict, and it was, everything was just so simple. Jesus didn't need a huge place. He just was wherever, and the disciples followed, and they did whatever he ask them exactly. to so we loved we love the local church <laughs> and if if you were in the car you'd see we're going through a lot of technical difficulties but Stephen That's why is, we're laughing so much because it's been a problem <laughs> right i know but in drama you have it i think remember when you were jesus that one of the performances uh the one of the guide cables yeah, got yeah. messed up and you do jesus ken benson jesus, and we spun around jesus <laughs> jesus started spinning yeah. like i didn't yes. know jesus was spinning on the ascension <laughs> I don't. That's not part's not written in the Bible. He was looking all over the whole earth. That's what he was doing. <laughs> don't miss anyone? <laughs> right? Listening to your prayers, everyone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so funny. You never yeah. know what's going to happen. You just got to go know. with it. I know. Yeah. Just like this yeah. this podcast, man. You know, a video channel. Right. You know, it's like uh, you make the best of it, and we're just trying to we're just trying to do something good for Jesus, man. And that's yeah. That's the thing. And I was telling somebody the other day. You know, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be. It's great if you can do those kind of things. But it's really just simple. You know, Jesus was simple. He just went from town to town, found people, talked to people. And he didn't have anything. Right. It was simple. I don't know whoa, why we feel like, like I said, it's good if you have those things, but you don't need them. Right. You know, you can just walk up to people and just be the Jesus they might never see. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're hoping we're doing with the arts place is teaching these kids and teaching VBS kids and those things that you can just be who you are for Christ and just allow him to use you in what you are. Right. Right. I love it. This, this, this spot actually at Christ church is the very spot when Kim and I were praying together at the end of youth group, driving back to our apartment. And I stopped the car and I said, honey, I think I might supposed to be a, youth pastor and she was like really <laughs> I was like yeah I think I think that if I had the offer to go be a youth pastor somewhere I probably ought to take it and she was like wow I didn't that's amazing you know I, I didn't I didn't think that, that that was something you wanted to do because I was I was working in the music industry and and uh, editing music videos and doing the stuff and and uh, so we prayed right at that little spot. Back that's at awesome. The, and, that, and that's and, how it is. It's just right. God calls you wherever. That's right. That's right. Whenever. That's just so awesome. All that, you know. Like, yep. Again, you don't have to be like on a mountaintop. Right. Down at the altar. It's just like right there in the parking lot. That's right. Leaving. I think this. I think God wants me to be a youth pastor. Yeah. <laughs> that's so and, great. And then you can take yourself back to those places as like a milestones or like a Bethel situation yeah, where you right. put up a, a stone of remembrance. You know, like that is that was the spot that was the spot well I think I think we can kind of bring it here to to a close talking about Jesus and the person of Jesus Christ and Steve tell me about a time like you know when when you know that you really entrusted your life to the Lord what 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 does Jesus mean to you well that's kind of every day you know I thought I would be at Christ Church I thought I would retire there I worked there for 22 years and things changed and he moved me to another place where I thought I'd be for a while and then he moved me to another place so I I think what I've learned throughout my years is things are gonna change all the time and no matter where you are like I'm at a place that I'm working at a, a place that isn't a church it's not a Christian foundation but I know God has me there and I think that's what he's taught me just to be content wherever I am and it's taken me this long to actually learn that because I've always been like well God this isn't what you called me to do and I heard him say are you sure (laughs) and then I just said okay God wherever I am I need to show you so I want to make a difference and if I can bring people closer to him through who I am and what I do yeah amen Amen. That's that's so good. I, I I have those little moments with God too, and arguing about, you know, is this what you really want from me, or am I doing it right, Lord? And 
And I, I think that the beauty of God is that we believe that he's a God of grace and that I, I'm not going to be perfect. And he already knew that. That's, that's why he had to send Jesus. Cause like Wayne just can't do it. He, he needs, he needs my son. And, uh, and uh, so my provision has been made for my sin mm, amen. and the Holy Spirit can um, like God, God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. So he doesn't need me to be perfect. He just needs me to be fully dependent yeah. on him. And uh, then, then the whole religious pressure test of always trying to be perfect, then you can kind of just release yourself and get free from all that. And Amen. I, because, you know, we can't be perfect and we always need to depend, be dependent on him. Right. Because just like life, improv, I keep bringing it back to improv because life is that way. You never know what's going to happen around the corner. And to just be able to call out on him, yeah. no matter what, we always need that. That's right. That's right. Well, I have really enjoyed our time, even though we've had some technical difficulties right, here too. today. This is so fun. <laughs> uh, you people got to join in like Jesus Taxi. This is great. Right? I love it. For it's sure. So fun. Get a chance to be a guest, come and do it. I'm going to get in the shade here and just give a gospel appeal and finish up Amen. our episode before we, before we have any more All battery right. problems. But my friends, if you're watching here today and, and you don't know the Lord Jesus, can I just tell you, he died for you. Mm -hmm. He loves you. All he wants you to do is to come to him. You can't be perfect. None of us are perfect. And Stephen's not perfect. I'm not perfect. But we know the perfect one. And the gospel is always true. It's still true today. He, he, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever Amen. would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So if you need to give your life to Jesus, would you pray this prayer with us right now? Just pray, just pray these words. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that God raised you from the dead according to the scriptures. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. I want to serve you, Jesus, from this moment forward. In your name, amen. 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 <laughs> I hope something we said today <laughs> affected somebody. <laughs> serve in your local church. Tell people about the Lord. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Proclaim him to a lost and a hurting world. And I know that God's going to use you in tremendous ways. Stick around here for a few seconds. You see ways to support and partner with the ministry. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the Jesus Taxi show today. The Jesus Taxi is a proud outreach of Summit Church of Castle Rock, Colorado. Go to mysummitchurch.com and press the donate button to support the ministry financially. If you want to do that, you can also do it by text. It doesn't cost anything, no fee for it. If you text the amount of your gift to this number, 303-625-9434, and then press send, Follow the prompts using your smartphone, and 100% of what you give by text will go to the ministry. You can also mail your gift the old-fashioned way. Just write a check and mail it to this address, Summit Church, 200 South Wilcox Street, Box 243, Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104. And we'll see you next time on the show. Remember, God loves you. He loved you so much that he sent Jesus. And he, he's there with you in your ups and downs. So share this link with a friend, and we'll see you next time on the Jesus Taxi Show. The sun keeps going up and down every day. You're the reason why I'm standing.